Hey everyone, my name's Tenebris, and welcome to Road to Vostok. If you haven't followed along with the project so far, Road to Vostok is a hardcore FPS with bits of immersive sim and a lot of survival elements set in the modern day between Finland and Russia. Your goal is to travel to the titular Vostok that lies on the other side of the border. In these dev builds, we get to see upcoming features to Road to Vostok, give our feedback, maybe point out any bugs we come across, and just in general get a window on the active development of a game I'm very much anticipating to be one of the best hardcore FPS games to come out. Today's dev build is easily the biggest so far, and it's one that I've looked forward to for a while now, covering Winter and Recoil. With refreshed audio, new weather seasons, new recoil, and two new guns, I can tell this is going to be a fun build to dig into. So let's start our feedback with the new and improved weapon audio. After hiring a freelance audio engineer to help with the project, powerful and punchy audio is something I've always hoped to have in the game, and the progress of how audio has expanded and improved over the past short while due to the freelancer's help is incredible so far. Man, that Dragunov is sounding like a beast! All the small details like bullet sound effects, the shell casings hitting the ground, and especially the sounds for the SP-22 and the Dragunov, it's all coming along excellently. As a small bit of feedback, the shell casings could have different shell casing sounds for the different calibers, but ultimately it's a very small detail and the fact that that this stuff is all audible is still huge for immersion. So next up, let's take a look at how recoil is and give some feedback and personal opinions on it. But as a takeaway, I'd say again, the work being done so far is awesome and recoil as a whole is starting to feel much more natural. So first off, let's look at the 74U, which I feel is a great example of a middle ground with recoil. 545 and 556 are like a middle ground of calibers in their own way, especially in video games. So the fact that 9mm handles even easier than 545 is great, and 545 itself is very controllable, which is also very nice. It'll be great to see how 762 and higher power rounds will handle in full auto, but again, the 74U is a great middle ground. The SP-22 though, this thing is very nice. It handles like how a high-end pistol should feel. It's pretty much dead on all the time and feels like a really reliable sidearm. Personally, it might be my favorite weapon the developers added so far. Even with zero arm stamina, you can continue to pop off accurate shots, which I think shows how important it'll be to carry a sidearm in Road to Vostok. But the Druganov, this is my only real bone to pick. I think it's too accurate in hip fire. An SVD is best used when laid out or supported, and the hip fire's laser beam accuracy is maybe just a bit too much. 
It's not like it needs to be shooting sideways, but if it could maybe have higher arm stamina drain and a bigger penalty when at zero arm stamina, I think sniper rifles could be a ton of fun. Then prone could help you aim for longer, allowing prone to be a essential part of sniping in Road to Vostok. But I'm maybe going on here. I just think it could be a little bit more inaccurate in hip fire. But other than that one gripe, it's honestly feeling so good here in the game. With canted aiming and hip fire and the ways we interact with our weapons, it's all coming together beautifully here. And speaking of the ways we interact with our weapons, a small but nice addition is positioning scopes on the rail. You could do this by holding control and scrolling, and it's just a nice little touch of immersion. In the future, I could see rail positioning being huge for opening up spaces for uh, canted sights and additional scopes and stuff, turning a one times into a three times with the right scope attachment. There are tons of ways this could open up things for scopes in the game in the future. Then for the second last feature to look over here, Winter. I've waited a long time to experience this in-game, and it's just as immersive as I'd hoped. I live in a country with a similar climate to Finland, so the wintry scenery with evergreens everywhere is very much at home for me in its own way. The snow is really nice too, but I'm the biggest fan of Blizzard right now as the setting. Its conditions are absolutely bleak. It'll be great to survive through this stuff properly when the game gets to that point, maybe even in the near future here. It's crazy to think how far the game's come along, and soon we'll have our first major update to the demo, which will pretty much turn it into a completely refreshed experience. I'm so freaking stoked, man. But speaking of being stoked, the last thing we need to check out today, the new Night Vision HUD effects. I really enjoy it, man. It's got a civilian night vision kind of look to it that is really easy on the eyes. I'm hoping we'll have maybe a few different types of night vision goggles to choose from in the game, from the dusty old Soviet green to maybe more refined modern day goggles like the ones we see here. I really do enjoy how light is handled too, with scopes having variable light options for the right types of scopes. It's again, all very immersive. And as a final aside, I think the terrain has changed around here due to the new terrain tools Auntie's been using, but I might be wrong on that, but things are just feeling a bit more organic. Though it's been a while since we've been back to this little dev area, so again, I'm, I might be wrong on it. So this was easily the biggest update we've seen so far through these dev builds, changing integral things such as how recoil functions to the sound design, even small immersive details like the light of your target reticle and scope positioning, then the night vision goggles and immersive winter season. I'm so happy with how this project is progressing, and hopefully there will be big news in the future in regards to that demo update. But for now, I want to know, what do you think of Road to Vostok? If this is your first time hearing about it, I have a ton more content on Road to Vostok, so definitely check that out. But for now, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.